We are back. It's the Joe Holka Show presented by Line Movement. If you're listening to this on the podcast feed, wondering where the video was this week, I mean, it's week 15. You guys should know by this point, but I'm here to remind you again, this is the one segment per week that'll live exclusively on the Line Movement YouTube channel. So if you're already here, welcome. Do us a solid toss a like on this video. Consider subscribing. Ton of live streams and content coming your way each and every day. So be sure and hit that notification bell so you don't miss anything. Now, you're doing all of those things, right? Because you're going to continue to get value here. Uh, and that includes bringing on some of the best guests in the industry, both on my show and online movement. So one of those people joins me again today. We actually got together earlier today on his show as well. So I'll let him speak to that. But he's the lead NFL analyst at fantasypros.com. He writes this insanely in-depth article that we're almost through. He's almost done with it for the year, which I know is exciting. Uh, it's called The Primer, about every player in each and every game. Mike Taglier. How's it going, my man? Welcome back. Oh, man, I'm in such a good mood today. And I'm guessing it has to do with the fact that I'm 15 of 16 done. It's almost like, you know, when you get to the end of a work day and you're walking by your colleagues and everybody's giving each other five, you know, middle of the day, you're screaming at each other. You're swearing at each other. You're saying, why wouldn't you do this? And then you get to, you know, putting times five o'clock, you get to 430 and you're like, hey, I'm your best friend. You guys want to go out for drinks after this? And uh, fortunately, the NFL, uh, we were able to have all the weeks played and there's not going to be an extra week, which would create an extra week of work, which let's just be honest, nobody wanted. So I'm in a good mood, man. <laughs> I, I love it, dude. Yeah, it just so happens your work day happens to be uh, multiple, multiple months uh, and a little bit longer than most people's work days. People think we just like hang out, watch football, just like write some articles when we feel like it. Uh, not necessarily the case, man. Uh, but I'm not here to complain. I'm here to talk about our week 15 locks of the week on DraftKings, one at each position. Uh, like I said, if you guys haven't checked out the Fantasy Pros podcast, I went on that, uh, that podcast earlier today. Uh, I think that goes out tomorrow, probably about the same time you're watching this video anyway. So we go through a little bit deeper on the slate, obviously. Uh, I mean, you probably listen to this, you know exactly what the Fantasy Pros podcast is, but uh, it was a lot of fun going through uh, from a deeper perspective, but we're going to talk about some guys uh, that we really like at each position, and in particular ones that I know we're aligned on because I've seen the list. But starting at quarterback, he's 6K on DraftKings. Taysom Hill, why is he your lock of the week, Tags? I mean, assuming he plays, right? Because we're hearing these rumors about Drew Brees trending. I don't think the Saints are going to put him out there in harm's way, especially considering Taysom Hill's played extremely well. And honestly, if you look at Taysom Hill as a passer this year compared to Drew Brees, he may ha he's been just as good. And I understand he had two matchups against the Falcons, but uh, completing 75% of his passes, 7.7 .7 yards per attempt, four touchdowns, one interception. And then obviously he has that element to the run game. Sean Payton's a smart dude. I mean, I think that there's a reason that Sean Payton has hyped up Taysom Hill. Uh, he's seen him in practice. He understands the way that he can work his offense around him. And then we saw Taysom Hill even, you know, exploit some matchup last week uh, against the Philadelphia Eagles with Alvin Kamara. This is a matchup where some of his best strengths should come out. You know, the the the, the Chiefs they they allowed the sixth most fantasy points in the ground to quarterbacks last year. This year they're allowing the eighth most fantasy points in the ground to quarterbacks. Uh, they do allow a ton of production to running backs and quarterbacks. So it's like you look at Kamara and you say he was targeted 10 times in the past game last week. We're going to continue that this week. We're going to keep rolling with that. Uh, Michael Thomas and him seem to be getting on the same page, connected on all eight of their targets last week. This game has a, a total over 50. So, I mean, it's not like it's one of the higher uh, ones, but you're only paying 6K for a guy with a floor of Taysom Hill that's rushing for, you know, at least basically 40 yards every single game. And then he's throwing the ball a little bit too. So, uh, and, and what's projected to be somewhat a mini shootout between these two teams, I, I like Taysom Hill quite a bit at his price. I like Taysom as well. I think you hit on something that probably not enough people are talking about. Like Sean Payton's a smart guy. Like everyone wants to have this narrative that like Kamara's done. Kamara can't be effective with Taysom Hill. He's not going to catch passes. What did we see last week? Like they figured it out, right? Like they're going to know how to get the best out of these players, except for especially these weapons that are so dynamic. So uh, I'm pretty bullish on this game overall. Uh, I think that there's a lot of pieces here that might even go a little bit lower on the Taysom Hill thing. Actually, you caught me by surprise earlier today, tags on your podcast, because everyone wants to talk about about Jalen Hurts, he's 5,900. Like we we know what we're getting with Taysom Hill. He's only a hundred more in a pretty solid game environment overall. So I've actually, I've not backed away necessarily from uh, from the Jalen Hurts, but just a hundred more gets to Taysom Hill. I kind of like that. So let's move on to your running back lock of the week. Uh, no surprise. I'll say that I've gotten mostly unstuck on Derrick Henry this year, which is very positive. I used to never play this guy, but he's 9,500, an amazing spot. Your running back lock of the week. 
Yeah, I mean, I, I compared this on our podcast earlier. We recorded. I said, uh, imagine you're driving on your way to work, and you there, there's ten different traffic lights that you're going to go through. When you're playing against the Detroit Lions, you're getting green lights on at least nine of those, uh, maybe even ten. Uh, it's like a perfect day on your way to work, and uh, you can kind of pick and choose your battles against them. We know Derrick Henry is coming up on. He actually just surpassed fifteen hundred yards in the ground, and you know, Joe, we talked about this too, and the fact that a narrative that you know, coaches and running backs, they, I think that they know about records, especially that they're coming up on. And it's, it's a very select few running backs who have rushed for 2000 yards. Derrick Henry can absolutely do that. And I think that's part of the reason they left him on the field last week uh, to get 26 carries for 215 yards against the Jaguars team that they were blowing out the entire game. There was no contest there. Uh, the Detroit lions with or without Matt Patricia, it doesn't even matter. If you look at what they've allowed to running backs, uh, they've allowed 23 touchdowns to them so far. No other team has allowed more than 18 touchdowns. You look at the point per opportunity, you know, looking at targets or carries against them, they're allowing exactly one PPR point per opportunity. So even if the running back is, is strictly average and he gets 20 touches, which we can absolutely say Derrick Henry's a lock for 20 touches barring injury, he's scoring 20 PPR points. So I understand the $9,500 price tag is, is, you know, it's, it's tough to swallow for a guy that doesn't catch very many passes, but at the same time, Derrick Henry is a slate breaker. Like if, if he goes off and he does what he did last week, you do not hit cash if you do not have Derrick Henry in your lineup. And looking at the slate in general at the running back position, I don't know if there's enough value smash spots that we can say like with no question, these guys are going to crush value. I think you have to pay up for Derrick Henry. You're paying a little bit of a premium just to make sure not one player ends your day very early because he's going to be very highly owned and you know there's that explosive ability that like he could literally end your day on one play at this ownership and with the type of plays that he tends to break off in these great spots. So I'm with you. I think the difference between Derrick Henry now and Derrick Henry last year was there was other options up there. You hit on it. There's not a lot of them, at least at the running back position that we're super interested in. Dalvin Cook is 9K, tough matchup against Chicago. But last year, we had CMC, we had Zeke, we had Kamara. There were at least some options if we didn't want to go to Derrick Henry, who wasn't catching passes like some of those other guys at an elite rate. So I'm on board uh, this week in particular because play everyone against Detroit. I think that's all we need to say about that. Your wide receiver lock of the week. Uh, this is a guy that I, I'm slightly nervous because everyone is talking about him, but it's probably just because his price is kind of bad relative to his opportunity and what he's been doing on the production side of things. Brandon Ayuk, he's 6,300, your wide receiver lock of the week. Yeah, it's really difficult to get away from him at 6,300. You know, I do a lot of redraft stuff and I have him as a, he's actually my wide receiver 10 on the week. So I, I like him quite a bit. When you look at this 49ers offense and you say, oh, they're, they're without George Kittle. Now they're without Debo Samuel. And it's like, where did all these guys go? Raheem Mostert likely going to be out for this week. So, you know, people are going to like Jeff Wilson. They're going to try and figure out the other running back to use. But in reality, they're still going to throw the ball half the time. And when that ball get, does get thrown, it's going to go to Brandon Ayuk. He's a guy that's been getting tons of double digit target games, especially with Samuel out of the line. Lineup. In the games where Samuel's been out of the lineup, he's totaled eight catches for 91 yards and a touchdown, seven catches for 75 yards and a touchdown, and then 10 catches for 119 yards last week in a tough matchup, too. Uh, and now you look at him to go up against a Dallas Cowboys team that when, when opponents are throwing the ball against this team, they're having so much success. The problem is, is that they're not doing it a whole lot, like very often, and I think that's why people are a little bit scared going into that matchup. But knowing Ayuk is that guy that's going to see the double-digit targets, he's the clear cut number one in this team. There's no one else that I could see leading this team in targets in this game. When targeted, wide receivers are averaging 2.06 PPR points per target against this Dallas secondary. To give you a glimpse of just how bad that is, Calvin Ridley is averaging 2.05 PPR points per target. So essentially every wide receiver against them turns into Calvin Ridley and his efficiency with his target. So uh, if you have a guy getting double digit targets against a defense that's allowing a league high uh, in points per target, I, don't, I, th I think you have to play him, especially considering his price. Yeah, if we want to talk tournaments for a second, obviously we went a little bit deeper into this on the Fantasy Pros podcast. But one thing I like about this game overall, not necessarily stacking with the quarterbacks, but I think there's a lot of mini stack potential here with Ayuk in particular, but also at least one of the Dallas pass catchers on the other side. So I really like Michael Gallup at his price. Obviously, the intermediate to deep passes where he kind of want to attack this defense, but those deep passes, those air yards are coming from Andy Dalton. So that's something to think about. Uh, CD Lamb still has a pretty nice price point at 4,500. I guess what my point is in terms so like getting in one of these Dallas guys can really open up a lot for your lineup overall. So your tight end lock of the week, obviously, if we wanted to go to Travis Kelsey at AK, that's fine. That's a tough price tag, especially on this slate. And we're trying to get in someone like Derrick Henry. So you're moving down a little bit and I'm definitely on board with it. Mark Andrews, he's 5,500. Tell us why he's your tight end lock of the week on DraftKings. 
yeah, going back to the whole idea of points per target in terms of when uh, players are targeted against certain teams, I, I <laughs> we reminisced about the, the Arizona Cardinals last year and the fact that you know any any tight end that came up on the slate, you played them against the Arizona Cardinals just because you knew they were going to go off. It, it wasn't a matter of how how much how many points they're going to score. You just knew it doesn't even matter how much they cost. We're playing that tight end that's playing the Cardinals, and it worked out right. So that Cardinals team last year allowed two point three two PPR points per target. That's massive. This year, the team that they're playing this week, that's exactly what they're allowing. I mean, Mark Andrews, 2.32 uh, PPR points per target. Marquise Brown might not make the, he might not be on the field for this game. We don't know yet because COVID, he's on the COVID list. He was a close contact. So as long as he tests negative for, you know, X amount of days, he can be back in the lineup. But can they really prepare for him to be a part of the game plan? He's been a guy that's been getting six to eight targets per game on a consistent basis. Mark Andrews is the guy they know is going to be in the lineup. They know this is a good matchup. The Jaguars, that, that secondary right now is just a complete mess. They have zero answers to stop anybody. They're missing cornerbacks. They're missing linebackers. They're missing pass rushers. They're missing everything. The only concern I have for Mark Andrews is that the Jaguars haven't allowed a tight end more than four receptions in a, in a game this year, which I, I think that comes down to it's all the, it's the whole Cowboys concept where there's plus matchups all over the field and you right. kind of get to pick and choose your options. But we know that the, the Baltimore Ravens don't target their running backs in the passing game. Again, we know that Marquise Brown might not play for this game. And even if he is, he's not going to be have much practice time with the team. So what are we talking about? Willie Sneed, Miles Boykin, Des Bryant, those are the other guys in the team. So Mark Andrews, I definitely think that he's someone uh, – at the tight end position, it's hard to say someone's a lock outside of someone like Travis Kelsey, but taking the discount to get 5,500, I think Mark Andrews is as much as a lock as anybody. Yeah, even though this offense isn't passing a ton overall, like the constant still seems like Mark Andrews. So I kind of hope that Hollywood plays in this game because I preferred Mark Andrews anyways. His targets per route run, top five. His weighted opportunity at the position at least is top three. So I think that the volume should be there overall. I'll, I'll throw a little bit of, I guess, uh, an honorable mention uh, to Cole Komet. Uh, I didn't want to make Tags talk about a Chicago Bear on this show, but he's 3K. He's seen seven targets in two straight games. So I think if you want to pay all the way down, He's totally fine. Uh, speaking of gross positions and paying all the way down, uh, the defense position, never a fun time, uh, but this Washington defense at 2,600, your lock of the week at a very gross position this week. It's so funny, uh, Joe, because I put it on an article every week. I, I put it out the week, so basically the Saturday before the game start, and I say, weekend waiver wire stashes, and I tell people who to stash as a defense for the following week. This week was one, it, it was a gross week to stream defenses, and I, I put Washington in there. Someone messaged me and said, you lost me at Washington. I, I can't read anymore <laughs> because they didn't want to, because it's like, you never want to think, Oh, I want to play a defense against the Seattle Seahawks and Russell Wilson. That's not really the point, right? You have to break it down to numbers like pure numbers. And before that jets game, the Seahawks were allowing the 17th most fantasy points to their opponent because Russell Wilson is constantly under pressure. That offensive line is still not great. But as the year has gone on, Russell Wilson, his efficiency has dwined a little bit and it's because he's played some really tough pass defenses. This is another one of those defense. Uh, Russell Wilson's thrown 11 interceptions this year. That leads to, like, when you generate pressure up front with those front seven, it's going to generate opportunities for interceptions. And that's ultimately why Russell Wilson has thrown those 11 interceptions. Not because he's not accurate. It's because he's been constantly under pressure. The pressure is what basically Washington has done well. They're averaging 8.3% sack rate. That's the third highest in the league behind only the Steelers and the Eagles. So if you're generating that pressure, you're getting those sacks and you're only paying 2,600 for them. Let's not, if you're paying up for a defense, you almost need to guarantee, you know, that they're going to have turnover and all that stuff. All we're looking for from Washington is to keep Seattle, you know, under 25 points. We're asking them to generate three, four sacks, which is definitely doable with this uh, pass rush they have in Chase Young, growing into his role as a as a stud defensive end. Um, and Russell Wilson, again, it, it all comes back to the idea that Russell Wilson has started to struggle a little bit. This game is taking place in Washington, so it could, it could almost... There could be weather conditions there because we're now to the time of the year where all these things start to factor in. Russell Wilson, I, I mean, again, I, I know it's not sexy and it doesn't turn anybody on to play the Washington defense, but if you're looking for someone in the cheap range, 2,600, I don't think you're going to find one with the, the that generates the pressure and the chance of turnovers that this defense does. I like it. Uh, now we just got a couple minutes left here. So I think I want to touch quickly on my favorite stack of the week as well. This is, uh, I'll give tags a second to think of one. Uh, it's one we talked about a little bit earlier on the slate as well.